Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk about the books I'm planning on reading in February 2023. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like February. It's my least favorite month of the entire year. It's always the time of year when I am just so over the winter. But here in Pittsburgh, we are still smack dab in the middle of it. We get a ton of snow in February, like more so than we get in December and January. It's always very snowy around here in February, at least in March. I know that's still the winter and I am over the winter in March as well. But at least I feel in March that we're close enough to spring that it's easier for me to push on through. Not the case for February. It feels like we're just landlocked in the middle of winter. So to help me through this month, I have jam-packed my TBR with amazing sounding books that I cannot wait to read. I have so many books I want to read in February. I know it's the shortest month of the year, but I feel like the weather, did I mention the weather sucks around here in February? It normally keeps me inside for most of the time, so I feel like I might have a chance to get through all of these. And I mean, if a TBR isn't hyper ambitious, is it even one of my TBRs? So let's start off by talking about all of the fiction books that I would like to read in the month of February, starting with a short story collection called The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filiaw. This has been an incredibly popular collection over the past few years, which I know was partially helped out by the literary scene here in Pittsburgh. This was published by the West Virginia University Press, and we're the closest bigger city to them. And I know that some bookstores here in the Berg helped put this one on the map. I've heard amazing things about this book. I've been wanting to read it. I've been wanting to read more short story collections, just period. So this was an easy choice. Next up is a novel that I would like to read because this author's most recent recent book unexpectedly made its way onto my favorite fiction books of 2022 list. But that book is called She Weeps Each Time You're Born by Quan Berry. The author of this book also wrote We Ride Upon Sticks. I know that one got pretty popular. But also When I'm Gone, Look for Me in the East, which is the one that became a favorite of mine of last year. Since I read and really enjoyed both of those, I figured I should probably go back and read her debut novel. This one is about a Vietnamese girl who realizes that she can hear the voices of the dead. I've realized through reading Quan Berry's work thus far that she likes to incorporate magic and elements of spirituality. And she also uses gorgeous prose that really asks something of you as a reader. I really like those elements. I've really come to enjoy her style. So I figured it was about time that I go back and read her debut. I'm also finally going to read or at least attempt to read Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This one was very popular after it was released in 2020. It's about a young woman who begins participating in this secret medical experimentation program. I've heard this one is very unnerving. And the thing that scares me the most about it is that a lot of people classify it as horror, which is a genre I rarely, if ever, go near. I will read the occasional thriller. I like reading the occasional thriller. But I am a scaredy cat, so I normally stay very far away from horror books. But the premise of this one and its popularity has me really intrigued, so I'm at least going to give it a try. There's also a new release that is coming out in February. I have an arc of it, and I really want to get to it because I think everyone's going to be talking about it. It seems like everyone is already talking about this book. It's called I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay. This book follows a 40-something-year-old podcaster who goes back to her boarding school alma mater in New England to both teach a couple of courses, but also it seems like she starts to reinvestigate the death of one of her classmates that happened when she herself was a student there. This one has gotten such good buzz so far. I love a good campus novel, so we'll see if this one lives up to the hype. Now, as I talked about in my January TBR video, I am going to be, at least for the next few months, taking some recommendations from the Storygraph app. I want to see if they are any better at picking out novels for me than I am at picking them out for myself because I'm not always great at it. So the one of theirs that I'm going to take them up on in February is called The Painted Kiss by Elizabeth Hickey. This is historical fiction about the tumultuous relationship between the artist Gustav Klimt and the woman who posed for his most famous painting, which is called The Kiss, which ironically enough is not the painting featured on this book cover odd design choice. For whatever reason, I feel like I'm obsessed with books about art and artists. It doesn't make any sense. I'm much more of a numbers person. I feel like I barely understand art. But anytime I pick up a novel that has anything to do with art or nonfiction, actually, now that I think about it, 
it always does it for me. I mean, my favorite fiction book of last year was about artists. So I'm really hoping that that trend continues here. I've also fairly recently decided that I want to make it a new tradition of mine, at least for the next few years, of rereading a Jane Austen novel every single February. Last year, I did my very first reread of Persuasion, but I didn't pick up just any edition. I read the annotated edition. And now I want to go back and reread all of the Jane Austen novels in those annotated editions. All that additional information made me feel like I was living inside that novel. And it gave me such a deep look at the characters that I then made a whole video. It was essentially a psychological breakdown of the Elliot sisters and why exactly Anne said no to Captain Wentworth. If you did not see that video, I will link it below and up in the cards. I am very proud of it. And the annotated edition is what helped make it happen. So I've decided that this year, I want to take a more comprehensive look at the very first Jane Austen novel I ever picked up, which was Sense and Sensibility. I think it was 2015, the first time I read this, the first time I read any Jane Austen. And I do remember I liked it, but I wasn't blown away by it. I remember that I found Marianne insufferable, and I don't think that will change as I'm rereading this book. But I do know that from reading The Annotated Persuasion, getting all that additional information, really understanding the novel so much better, that pushed Persuasion from being a three-star book to a four-star book for me. And I'm hoping something similar happens here. But then, since it is Valentine's Day month, I also wanted to read a contemporary romance novel, and I picked The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is about two people living in London. They share a flat, an apartment, but they work opposite schedules. So they never actually see one another. But then they start leaving each other little notes around the place that they share and they begin to fall in love. I've seen maybe a few negative reviews of this one, but it seems like most people find it charming. So I'm just crossing my fingers that I'm one of them. Another book that deals with matters of the heart is the first nonfiction book on my February TBR. And that book is called Pump by Bill Shutt. As the subtitle says, this is a natural history of the heart, the human hearts, and then the hearts of other creatures. I love Bill Shutt. I love his sense of humor. I had a fantastic time reviewing his book on the natural history of cannibalism here on my channel a few years ago. So I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. The next two nonfiction books that I've chosen to put on my TBR for the month of February, I put there because they very closely align with something that I'm going to be doing in the month of February. I'm taking the entire month of February off from drinking alcohol. I don't drink a ton these days, but I just decided it would be nice to have a formal break from alcohol during the month of February. So I decided as I'm doing that, it would be interesting to read books about people's experiences with alcohol, people's experiences with sobriety. And so the first one that I'm going to be picking up is called Drinking Games by Sarah Levy. This is a memoir in essays about the role that alcohol played in the author's life and also also what role it has in our grander culture. And then the other one that I would like to read is actually off of my 23 nonfiction books I would like to read in 2023 list. It's called Lit by Mary Carr. This is the second of this author's three total memoirs. And in this one, she discusses her experience with depression and alcoholism. I don't have any firsthand experience with alcoholism. It's not something I've ever struggled with. Again, that's not the reason I'm taking the break. But I think the fact that I am on that break from alcohol alcohol will make both of these reads all the more impactful. Then for my February TBR, I'm pulling one more book off of that 23 nonfiction books I want to read this year list, and that's Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. This is a book that breaks down the author's theory that American society is controlled by an invisible caste system. I've heard rave reviews of this one for such a long time. I'm excited to finally be getting to this one. Then the last nonfiction book I'm hoping to read in February is called Winter Pasture by Li Juan. This is the author's story of spending a season with Kazakh herders. I have been so excited to read this since it came out in early 2021. And then finally, just in case this TBR wasn't super ambitious already, I'm also going to pick one book at random off of my to-read shelf on Goodreads. How I do this is I go 
go to that shelf, I sort it by number, and then I use a random number generator to select three numbers, three books at random for options. Now the rule is that all three of those options need to be feasible. I need to actually be able to read that book during the month. It can't be a future release or something that's out of print and completely inaccessible. Then out of those three options, I give myself, I choose one to put on my TBR. I'm going to be looking at my laptop here. Let's see what my three options are. Option number one is The Devil's Teeth, a true story of obsession and survival among America's great white sharks. I had completely forgotten I even put this one on my TBR, but option number two is The Crossing Places by Ellie Griffiths. And then option number three was actually one of my most anticipated releases of one of the quarters of last year, The Last Confessions of Sylvia P by Lee Kravitz. I'm really tempted by that Sylvia Plath one, but honestly, I have been really craving reading mystery books lately. I've been eagerly anticipating the arrival of March Mystery Madness. And if I pick the crossing places, that would give me an excuse to pick up a mystery ahead of March. So I'm going to go with the crossing places. All right. Now that I have fully overloaded myself with books to read during what is the shortest month of the calendar year, that's probably good for this video. As always, if you want to read any of these books or if you've read them and you have thoughts that you want to share, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. All the books that I talked about today, as well as any other links that I promised you, will be linked for you in the description box below for your clicking convenience. If you're on a mobile device, just tap the title of this video and that will expand for you. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>